Hello, my name is Lindsay Cole and I'm on the Jeffco Elementary Science content team. This video is designed to provide an overview of student learning for the second grade unit cause and effect force and motion. This physical science unit focuses on how changes of speed or direction of motion are caused by forces, pushes, or pulls. This unit, like many others, provides ample opportunities for students to learn about the nature of science. Students will understand how and why scientists design fair investigations, collect data as evidence, and work to construct explanations. The big ideas of cause and effect, change, and constancy encompass the learning in this unit. There is one organizing concept, force and motion. Contained within this concept are all of the ideas of Newton's laws which govern all motion. Kindergarten students observe and describe the motion, speed, or direction of objects, people, and animals and develop the understanding that people and objects can move in many different ways. Some kindergarten classrooms may also have explored how forces can be classified as pushes or pulls. Your students will not formally explore the ideas of force and motion again until they are in 8th grade where they will learn to identify and calculate direction and magnitude of forces that are acting on an object and explain the results in the object's change of motion. Teachers should be aware of some common student misconceptions as they begin. Although students may think that a force can cause an object to move, they often will not understand that forces also cause objects to stop, change direction, or change speed. Most elementary students have the misconception that if an object is in motion, a force is acting to keep it moving. Students may think that force is a natural property of an object and objects can run out of force. Students might also not understand that objects at rest still have forces pushing and pulling on them. For example, as I stand on the, still on the playground, gravity pulls me toward the center of the earth while the ground pushes up on me. Teachers should not expect to correct all student misconceptions in this unit of study, but should be aware of them so as not to perpetuate any misconceptions. Your students will need to be able to accurately describe motion. When scientists describe motion, they use speed, distance, direction, and position. It is important to note that in order to accurately describe an object's distance, direction, and position, we need to use relationships to other objects, landmarks, latitude, longitude, or starting points. For instance, to precisely and completely describe the motion of a car, we might say, it traveled 55 miles per hour from east to west, it started on Elm Street and drove 15 miles in a mostly straight line until it stopped at the edge of a lake. All forces from twisting or running to riding or stopping can be categorized as pushes or pulls. Forces can make an object move, make an object stop, change an object's direction, or change an object's speed. In this unit, students will learn that friction is a force that slows down or stops objects. Students learn that the amount of friction between two surfaces depends on how rough or smooth they are. Friction is a force that always acts to oppose motion. For example, as a ball rolls through grass, the grass pulls on the ball, slowing it down. Inversely, walking on an icy sidewalk is difficult because the ice is smooth, so the pull of friction is small and things slide easily over. Sometimes friction is help helpful to us, like bike treads, and sometimes friction is something we want to prevent by oiling machine gears, for example. Gravity is a force that pulls on an object, including changing speed and moving it, without being in direct contact with it. All objects have gravity. Those with bigger mass have greater gravitational force. Gravity is stronger between objects that are closer together. Weight is a measurement of the force of gravity on an object. Students will learn that gravity is what keeps us all from floating into space and affects objects in motion and at rest. In this unit of study, students are continuing their understanding around the way scientists explain scientific concepts and ideas. Students further their learning around the way scientists design fair investigations. They work collaboratively to design investigations around the ways forces can affect motion. As you begin to think about creating your learning plans for this unit of study, be sure to look at the documents linked within Stage 3. There you will find ideas on designing lessons. 
Feedback is always welcome, especially in a new unit of study. If you have ideas, questions, or suggestions, please contact me. Also, please join our grade level science Schoology group to collaborate with your peers. Happy science!